Are you training for endurance and stamina, but you don't want to lose muscle? Watch this. Our next caller is Stephanie from Ontario, Canada. Stephanie, what's happening? How can we help you? Uh, so my question is about muscular adaptation for performance. Um, I grew up loving long distance running and cycling. Uh, since listening to your podcast about two years ago, uh, I started to incorporate resistance training into my training. So like in high school uh, and university, I, I was a competitive volleyball player, but I didn't really train in the gym very much. I just like ran and biked in the summers when it was um, mild enough to do that. So anyways, yeah, I started resistance training uh, a few years ago and I feel very strong. Like I feel uh, good when I do that. Um, but I'm just worried uh, because I signed up for a half Ironman this summer. I'm worried that my strength gains will be um, like will be weaker because I'm training for a half marathon and I'm going to be biking like 90 kilometers as well uh, in this race. So, yeah, I was just wondering does uh, increasing performance in um, like long distance steady state activities mean that my performance as a volleyball player, so like my vertical jump or the power that I get uh, from jumping and serving and hitting will decrease? I'm just wondering about, yeah, like muscular adaptation. Yeah, good question, Stephanie. Okay, so you you played at a, at a regularly high, at a decently high level in volleyball, right? And you practice pretty yeah. frequently? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you have an athlete that you're coaching who's playing volleyball and they and they practice five days a week and then they go down to practicing one day a week. Are you going to notice a decline in their skill and performance? Um, I would say, I don't know. Like, I think maybe if everyone else on the team is practicing still five days a week and they only do one. Let's say somebody's just training five days a week and they're practicing volleyball and then they stop practicing five days a week and they only practice one day a week. I think you can you can expect to see a, a, a decline in some performance yeah. and skill. That's normal, okay? Yeah. If you're training for an Ironman, you're going to improve your skill and your stamina and your performance specific to the Ironman, and you're probably going to lose some of it in other arenas. And, and depending on what arena we're talking about, you'll see more or less you know gains or, or losses. So for powerlifting, you'd see a bigger loss than you would maybe for volleyball. Um, but right. that's expected and there's nothing wrong with that. There's, in fact, not only there's nothing wrong with that, but it, when we're looking at things long term, it's great to move from one type of adaptation to another back and forth. Whatever strength okay. you lose training for an Ironman, you'll gain back so fast when you switch your training back to strength training. So my advice to someone like you is, first off, like how important- So then, so do you think I should start- Oh, go ahead. Well, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Ask what you were going to say. Oh, I was going to say, so then do you think like I should do 16 weeks of uh, Ironman training and then right after the Ironman, I should do like a jump training, like a vertical jump training program? I would go specific to Ironman training for however long you think you need for the Ironman. Mm -hmm. After you're done, I would give yourself a couple weeks of deload. So you're because Ironman's pretty half Ironman is intense. Um, so yeah. I give yourself a couple weeks and then I would go specific to train for what you're looking for. Now you're not going to lose all your performance cause you're still running, cycling, swimming, you're still moving, but the skill and the specific, uh, type of strength, the specific type of power, you may mm -hmm. lose a little bit because you're training more in another direction. And again, there's nothing right. wrong with that. So if you really want to perform well for the Ironman, focus on the Ironman. And then when you go back to your other training, It'll come back pretty quickly, especially because you have such a good base of that kind of training uh, in the past. The one thing that I would add is uh, nutrition. So where this could get um, out of hand real quick is what happens sometimes someone will, sh they're, they're not focused on building muscle and we're not focused on like volleyball performance. I just want to be good at Ironman. And so it's all about training the Ironman. And we kind of like aren't real, and you're burning so many calories. So you're not, you know, you're not going to put on body fat. So you're not really tracking food so much. And then your protein intake is really low and you are in a deficit a lot of times, and that's going to accelerate muscle loss. So right. the, uh, the one thing that I would add to try and mitigate how much performance slash strength slash muscle that we're going to lose is make sure you're getting adequate calories and protein, especially. So, you okay. know, I would be tracking that and making sure I'm hitting my kind of one to one, mm -hmm. your body, body weight in protein uh, on a daily basis. And then, you know, when I know I'm about to go on like a real long run or ride, 
uh, loading up, making sure that I have maybe some liquid calories that I can take before. So I've got a, a good amount of, of fuel and energy that my body can utilize. Um, that, that would be the one thing that I would add to try and um, good. Yeah, mitigate how much, because it's inevitable, right? We're, we're switching to adaptations and focus. You're going to get uh, yeah. more, you're, you're going to build a more endurance body type, not mm -hmm. a explosive, big, strong, muscular body type by doing that. That's okay. And like Sal is saying, uh, that's going to bounce right back. And it'll bounce back even faster if you do a good job of hanging on to as much of it as you can nutritionally by feeding the body. Um, it'll take okay. you that much longer if you just disregard that and just, hey, I'm running all the time. I'm not really worried about food. I can get away with eating kind of whatever I want, which is what happens to people sometimes who do this. And then they end up eating 40 grams of protein every day. And the body says, oh, we don't yeah. need this muscle anymore. We're just endurance athletes. And so they, it pairs yeah. down. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest okay. thing to consider is just the competing adaptations. So the the more you can go into one versus the other, uh, you know, the more the more efficient your body is going to uh, respond to that and actually learn that adaptation going forward. So you know, obviously, like endurance versus strength, you know, you're going to have both of those are going to compete a bit. So you know, yeah. if you can if you can separate those out and in, in through periods uh, and like say you're moving then from your your Ironman to go back, like you'd mentioned. More or vertical jump or like, you know, plyometric, you know, explosive type training, you know, just stay in that uh, very specific adaptation for a few weeks. Yeah. Now here's something you can do the whole time, Stephanie. I think the entire time you should focus on or, or add an element of correctional exercise to prevent imbalances or injury or movement uh, issues that cause you to lose efficiency of movement. So this will be right. valuable when you're doing the Ironman. This will be valuable for volleyball or anything else you do. Do you have Maps Prime Pro? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to make a deal with you. Uh, earlier, you said you were a teacher, right? Are you teaching? You're mm -hmm. teaching a class right now. Okay. Uh, no, I have a gym class. I'm just on pre my prep right now. Okay. Are you? But you do teach students. Yeah, I do teach students. Yeah. All right. If you promise not to give them homework today, I'll give you Maps Prime Pro for free. I want to <laughs> hook everybody up. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. All right, excellent. So we'll send over Maps Prime. I'll let him have a break. Yeah. Beautiful. And tell, hey, say Sal gave you guys a break. Yeah, Sal from Mind yeah, Pump. From Mind Pump. And, uh, I'll send you <laughs> Maps. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm going to send Maps Prime Pro to you, and you can use that through all of the training, no matter what you're doing. It'll benefit you no matter what. They actually know who you are because I, um, for their culminating, like their midterm, I uh, made them listen to one of your podcasts about uh, why everyone should deadlift and write a report on it. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, there cool. you go. You know, I, I, uh, one last thing. So we, uh, I don't know if you follow, um, uh, PJ, uh, PJF performance, Paul Fabric. Yeah, I do. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, his vert, I heard you program. talk about vertical. He's so good. I think he's the best in the business. Mm. So if you, if that's a great program, you know, all right. Thanks for calling in Steph. Okay. Yeah. I'll look into that. Awesome. So then, yeah, just if my goal is overall athleticism, do you think switching between, uh, endurance and power-based training is a good way to go or, or do you think it should be consistently one of them no, and then just switch up what if you want general what? overall then you do a little bit of everything if you want specific okay. then you okay. gotta be more focused okay sounds good all right thank awesome. you okay thanks very much thank no problem. you let me tell you man i'm winning those students over yeah. no, home no homework <laughs> for you guys <laughs> that's great yeah it's a it's similar question it's always we get questions like this all the time like how do i prevent my body from it's literally what you're literally asking is how do I prevent my body from adapting in a way that makes it get better at what I'm doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and you, and you can't like, you got to pick one or the other yeah. or be okay with a little bit of all of it. Well, I, you know, it, that's just, it is being okay with yeah. that. You're just not going to be the to best it. at the the one thing. If you're doing multiple things, if mm -hmm. you're sending yeah. multiple signals to the body, it's not going to be the best at that one thing, which I think is totally okay. Um, if you're not a, professional athlete yeah. or maybe could be like she's competing for Ironman so I would switch all my focus so I can be totally. do the best I can at that totally right. and then when I get back then I and then I get back I'm going to be more focused on probably volleyball because that's what I'm doing and then yeah I want to throw some endurance in there every once in a while so I don't lose that you know because I like those things but uh, knowing that the more I do in one way or the, one way or the other it's going to take a little bit from the other one totally Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.